Hey, welcome back to Baird Squid. In this video, we're going to be learning about probability and in particular, sample space and tree diagrams. Coming up. The sample space of an experiment is a set of its possible outcomes. We can represent sample spaces in a number of ways, including lists, grids, and tree diagrams. So there's a common misunderstanding that sample space diagrams only includes grids. However, in this video, we're going to be learning about all three ways, so make sure you watch until the end. Okay, so the first method is listing outcomes. The simplest way to represent a sample space is to list the possible outcomes in set notation. For example, the sample space for spinning this spinner is red, green, yellow and blue because that's the possible outcomes on this particular spinner. Method 2 is to look at grids. A grid or array is an efficient way to represent the sample space of an experiment involving two operations. Each point on the grid represents a possible outcome. For example, use a two-dimensional grid to illustrate the possible outcomes when tossing a coin and spinning the spinner shown. Okay, so if we do a grid and we can label the top spinner and we have A, B, C because that's the possible outcomes of the spinner. And on the horizontal axis, we can write coin and then we can write the possible outcomes of a coin which are heads and tails. So each point on the grid represents one of the possible outcomes. So in this case, we have the six possible outcomes of spinning a spinner with three sections and tossing a coin. Okay, so the third method is tree diagrams. A sample space can also be represented using a tree diagram. The first set of the branches shows the possible outcomes when tossing a coin. And for each of the outcomes, there are three possible outcomes for spinning the spinner. The path shown in red represents the outcomes TB, so that's tails and B in the spinner. The advantage of a tree diagram is that they can be used when more than two operations are involved. So the first branch represents the coin, the second branch represents the spinner, and we can follow each path to find each of the outcomes. So heads and A, heads and B, heads and C, tails and A, tails and B, tails and C. Okay, so let's tackle a question. It says, use a tree diagram to illustrate the sample space for A, tossing a 10 cent coin and a 20 cent coin simultaneously, and B, running a six sided die and tossing a coin simultaneously. So you're welcome to pause the video here and try the question for yourself. And then when you're ready, press play and I'll show you my work solutions. Okay, so for part A, I have the first branch which represents the 10 cent coin and the second branch which represents the 20 cent coin. For each coin we have a heads and a tails. So we can have the outcome heads and heads, heads and tails, tails and heads and tails and tails. So there's four possible outcomes for this experiment. So for part B, since we have a six sided die, we need six branches to represent the first possible outcomes. And the second branch will represent the coin. Now, since the coin has two outcomes, each one of those is going to have two branches. Now, if we fill in the possible outcomes of the die, we have one to six. And for the coin, we have heads or tails. So now if we follow each path, we can find the total possible outcomes, which are going to be one and heads or one and tails, two and heads, two and tails, and all the way down to six and heads and six and tails. So if you count these, there's a total of 12 possible outcomes when rolling a six-sided die and tossing a coin simultaneously. So make sure you watch the next video in our series, which we'll be talking about theoretical probability. And as always, thank you for watching. If you found the video helpful, drop me a like. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.